Hello, everybody. Welcome back to week four, I believe, of our introductory CAD class. Hopefully, y'all had a good week, having a good weekend. Um, can't see most of you today, but I imagine you're all doing well. So, um, as usual, at any time, if you have trouble hearing me or have trouble seeing something, feel free to ask questions. Um, you can unmute your microphone or type in the chat. Either way is fine. And before we get started, if you had any questions about what we were doing when we left off, which was trying to recreate this particular, I guess it's a thermostat gasket um, in on shape. So feel free to ask any questions. And my plan is to start off with just wrapping this up, maybe introducing a couple new concepts, and then moving on to the next thing. All right, great. So um, what we were doing last was um, last week, we kind of um, had our discussion about the role of relations, which are these tools here, which put a new set of rules on your sketch, right? And the kind of takeaway that we got from that was that our goal here is to fully constrain, fully define our sketch such that um, there's only one way for it to exist, so to speak. Um, it's kind of what I've been saying. And the way that Onshape represents that you are really done with your sketch is by turning everything black. Um, so we went over this last week, unlike those blue points and blue lines that you saw before, these black ones, you're unable to change just by dragging around. And the only way that you can change them is either by editing these relations, um, which means basically deleting them and creating new relations, um, or editing the numbers on these dimensions, which were the other thing that we learned, uh, where you put in a real number that corresponds to something in real life, like an inch, or in this case, a quarter of an inch. And that'll help you kind of explain to Onshape how big this thing is in terms of objects in the real world, which is useful for like 3D printing or other kinds of manufacturing. Um, so to finish off this gasket, as you might recall, we started off by creating the three holes. So there's one big hole in the middle, there's two small holes on either side. And what we figured out or what we kind of made the assumption about is that the two holes on the side are equal and they're kind of like lying on the same horizontal line as the big hole. So now that we've done the inside of it, kind of um, these inside contours, the only thing that's left is to do the outside. So that's this, um, someone called it a lemon shape, I think last week, um, this outer profile of the gasket. So you probably observed there's no specific tool on the sketch bar and definitely not that we've talked about that allows you to just create this kind of lemon shape. Um, I know at least one of you went ahead and like did some experimenting, maybe played around with the spline tool. And what you'll find is like, maybe the spline tool can create a shape like a lemon, but it'll be really hard to fully constrain it and turn it all black, which is kind of what we really want to do whenever we make a sketch. So we're going to stick to tools that we've learned, specifically the circle and the line. And I'll introduce to you like one new concept, which is going to be pretty helpful later on. Um, which is going to be called construction geometry, but we'll get there when we get there. So I'm gonna make a few assumptions about this object. Um, given that I'm working off of an image of a real object, there's only so much I can really know for sure about it, right? Um, for all I know, these curves aren't really circles. They might be some kind of special um, equation-driven geometry that there's no way that I could guess. But um, for my purposes, which is just learning about these sketch tools, um, the circle tool is plenty sufficient for me. And so that's what I'll start out with, right? Um, I'll start out thinking about this part of the outside, which is probably also a circle. And I noticed that it's probably um, a circle that has the same center as this inner hole, um, which we would call concentric or sharing the same center. 
Um, and so the way that I'll do that is, again, um, you'll recall that by default, the circle tool has what's called a center point circle. So make sure to select that particular tool. My circle tool is selected, and I first click on where I want to start the center of my circle, bring my mouse out, click again, and create my next circle. All right, so that's the start of it. And to kind of get these sides, I make the observation or assumption that this round part here on the outside of these like sharp points of the lemon, I assume that these are also circular arcs. So same idea again, what I'm gonna do is go and create a couple of circles um, that share the center. And what you'll notice, um, while I have the circle tool active, if I hover my mouse above a point, um, Onshape will kind of start to highlight that point in orange. Um, and same goes for if I hover my mouse over any other interesting feature in my sketch, like the circle or this point. Um, and what that means is if you create a sketch entity like the circle that I'm trying to create, while your mouse is over something that's highlighted, Onshape will automatically try to create some kind of usually a relation between the highlighted thing and the new thing that you're trying to create. So in this case, all that means is that when I create a new circle here, the center will automatically be made coincident to that point that I was covering over. Um, hopefully that makes some sense, but what I'm really saying is that because I hovered over this point while I was clicking to make a new circle, the new circle has its center on that point. Um, All right, and hopefully now um, I can play around with the sizes a little bit to my liking, but hopefully now you're starting to see a bit of an outline of a lemon here, right? You got the sharp points on the end, you got a big body here in the middle. Um, all that's left is a bit of smoothing out between the two circles where right now there's a little cusp here. And so before I do that, I'm gonna take a brief moment here to um, fully define my sketch again. And here's um, where you kind of see the difference between something that's underdefined, which on shape shows is blue, I can freely drag it around as opposed to something that's fully defined or black, which I can't drag around. So it's going to be done exactly the same way. Let's see how well you remembered how we fully defined the last sketch. Um, First of all, let's say that I want to make this circle and this circle equal um, or the same diameter, right? Um, maybe I don't know the diameter quite yet, but I want to make them have the same diameter. What relation would I use to do that? Question for anyone, feel free to just type in the chat if you don't want to talk right now. Can you say your question again? I didn't hear. Sure. The question is, as you might recall from last week, what relation do we use when we want to make two things, for example, these two circles, um, the same size? Equal tool. Very nice. That is true. We can use the equal sign. And now you can see what happens is, um, hopefully remember how to use relations. Um, I apply the relation and now these two circles grow and shrink together when I drag them around. Great, we're almost there. The last thing we need is to tell it what size it is. And again, numbers are arbitrary here. I'm making things up, um, but hopefully you remember how to make dimensions as well. Go ahead and put in some numbers um, based on what you think seems appropriate for this particular object. Again, my guess is as good as yours when it comes to this, seeing as I don't have the physical object with me to measure. How do I change it once I, if I think it's too small? Sure. Um, as we talked about before, when you want to edit a dimension. Oh, you can delete it, right. Yeah, you can delete it. And you can also double click on the dimension 
And that will bring up this editable text field, um, as you can see here, and you can just type in a new number, um, maybe three eighths, um, probably not three eighths, but yeah, you can edit them without deleting them. You can also delete them. All right, so now everything's black again. That means everything is fully defined. Let's move on. What if my like my circles on my sides are not this equal, like the two smaller circles that are all that we already um defined on day? What if they're not equal? Like when I draw the big circle, the way it cuts into the left one is like not the same. Like it's not like equal to each other, and I can't really change it. So are you saying they're not equal in the sense that the left and the right aren't the same? Like the left is yeah. bigger than the right? Yeah. Sure. Not the left is bigger than the right. Like the right is like more right than the left. Like when you draw a circle in the center and then you um try and get it to the to um cross the same area of both circles, it doesn't like like for example, if I if it if it reaches the the middle point of the left small circle, it reaches like farther than that. I don't really know how to explain it. Are you saying like the this, this circle is like the way I had it before, like they happen to be tangent to each other, but are you saying yours looks more like this? Or are you saying that there is some, like is everything black right now or not? Uh, I'm trying to make it all black. I see, okay. Uh, maybe at a time like this, it'd be best for you to perhaps quickly share your screen and I can better Wait, understand what's happening. Well, it's just like, I don't, it's just a small thing. Like, it's not equal. If you can figure it out, if so, work on it. If not, quickly, you can show us what's going on. Okay. But, okay, if you think you're fine, um, I, I have full faith that you can. Wait, could you Unless, oh, oh you're okay. I interpreted your okay yeah, as okay. you're good. Hey. Or right, Leo, do you have a question? <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to tell who's talking and what's going on. Leo? Could you share your screen so I could catch up? Because I, I'm just... All right, yeah, you didn't miss much if you um, perhaps joined late. Um, I didn't quite catch what happened there, but uh, all we've done so far is create three new circles that are concentric with three old circles that we had there before. And what we're going to do now is to smooth out these cusps so that we have kind of this lemon shape that we're going for instead of three circles right next to each other, like a kind of a weird Mickey Mouse head. And so um, I'll go ahead and spoil the mystery. Hopefully you had some time to think about it between the questions. I'm going to use the line tool to fill out these cusps. Um, and by cusps, I just mean these little um, pointy recessions in the lemon. So line tool, hopefully we're familiar with by now. And here is where you can really take advantage of Onshape automatically creating relations for you. Um, you can see before, like for all those three lines that I just created, I was making them by clicking first on the circle itself, making sure that the circle was highlighted before I clicked it. And when I do that, um, it automatically makes the lines coincident so that they're on the circle um, as opposed to something like this where it's off the circle. So it just saves you a step there when on shape automatically does some of the work for you. And all right, hopefully we're very comfortable with lines now. And last couple of things here, I'm going to use the tangent tool, which is another relation and if I haven't gone over this before, maybe you know from like your math class or something like that, um, what tangent means. And all it means is that if you have a line and a curve, it will just pick the point on the curve um, 
I guess it'll make the line out of slope such that it only intersects the curve at one point. Um, it's probably well explained by the little icon here. Um, you apply the tangent tool usually to a line, but really you can be to any, it can be to two curves even. And it just makes it so that they intersect at only a single point. Um, I guess that's another way to think about it is that it joins two curves that they're kind of like smoothly joining each other rather than sharply joining each other. Um, but hopefully you have some intuitive sense of what tangent means. Um, do you have a question, Leo? Yeah, like when I did another line, it, I, I, when I'm still on the sketch, I can't erase it. I'll just make more lines. If you're talking about something like this, where the line tool continues, um, you can hit escape yeah, to get yeah, out of I can't yeah, erase can escape it. to get out of the line tool, or you can select the line tool again. Uh, remember when things like that happen, uh, make sure check your yeah. toolbar to see if any tools are selected. Henry? Um, can you explain what perpendicular means again? Sure. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I don't know like Perfect. the background of math like everyone in this class has. I imagine like everyone's at a like different school grades. So like feel free to ask questions like that, which are um, no, it's just I forgot. I learned it in school in third grade. Okay, if you, if you got it, um, I'm not sure what's happening in the background there, but um, Basically, it's like the icon. We have two lines, and they'll form like a ninety-degree angle oh, with each okay. other. I remember that. Yeah. Bye. Thank yeah. you. Great. So um, where we left off, we were introducing this tangent tool, and probably the best way to understand what it does is to use it for yourself in a few different situations, and um, it'll make more sense. So I have the tool selected, and I'll use it. And this is one of the relation tool types that take two arguments or two clicks to, to make. Question. How do you make it so I wasn't, I couldn't really hear what, when you said, what you said, you said something like about um, on shape, making like the lines, like a cool thing that they did. And yeah. then when I looked at your screen, it was like, pair. they were like exactly the same length. And to be each other, how do you do that? Are you talking about when I created these lines? Yeah. Right. Um, so the idea is like by default, kind of, whenever you create something, um, there's no assumptions about it, right? I just created this line segment and it has no relations, it has no dimensions, it has no rules. I can drag them however I please. Yeah. Um, what's cool about most CAD programs is that when you hover your mouse over something that already exists, like the circle, and then you click, then the program kind of makes an assumption for you. So you'll notice that I that first point for that line, I clicked on the circle. Now I'll just click somewhere else to finish the line. Now this first point on shape assumed that I wanted this point to be coincident to the circle that I clicked on. So now I can't just drag this point off the circle. It's it's automatically had this coincident relation created for me between the point and the circle. So the, it's not it's nothing really that like maybe it doesn't seem that impressive, but it's pretty convenient when you can just like click on the circle, on the circle, and then the line is coincident to both circles oh, just okay. by me clicking on it without creating the relation myself. Thank you. Yeah, not, nothing nothing too outrageous. It's just um, something that exists. So right, tangent relation. Go ahead and apply that between your lines that you just created and the circles that they are touching. And the way you do that is you just go ahead, click the circle, click the line, click the circle, click the line, click the circle, click the line, circle, line, circle, line, circle, line. And as you do that, you'll notice that they turn black, except for this guy for some reason, and it seems like that's because this guy was not coincident. So I'll just fix that. 
And for those of you who are very comfortable with geometry, it'll make sense to you why creating these tangent relations fully defines the sketch, because there is no other line that exists that is both that is tangent to both circles, right? Uh, I accidentally just deleted my big circle. Sure. That's, I guess you'll have to recreate that one. Do you have a question, Leo? Yeah, when I'm trying to make the dimension, like it's it's I can't make it one one like right right there. Um but right here I can't make a line. I can't make the dimension. I can't like yeah. Okay. Um So are you talking about this, like these dimensions? Yeah. Okay, so these, uh, you might recall, we made last week. And the way you do it. And like, that, yeah. Um, so the dimension tool, like, like I emphasized last week, it's a, it's a bit of a smart dimension tool. It kind of makes a guess at what you're trying to do um, instead of only being able to do one thing, like, define, like just dimensioning the length of a line or just dimensioning a radius, it, it tries to dimension whatever you want based on the inputs you give it. So in this particular case, we're trying to dimension the distance between two points. So the way you do that is you just select the two points that you're going to dimension. So that's for me this origin and this point here. And when I click on them in that order, um, or in the other order, I guess, when I click on the two of them, Will you do that? It'll, create, yeah, it'll create a dimension between them. And so, yeah, that's what I mean when it's smart. Like, you can diameters, you can dimension oh, yeah. angles, you can dimension basically anything that it makes sense to have a dimension. And so, at this point, the sketch is all black and the shape exists. Everything I want is in here. I have my three holes, I have my outside profile. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is basically done. Um, and if I wanted to turn this into a 3D shape now, because as you know, um, in real life, gaskets and anything else is three dimensional, um, I would go back, um, click the check mark, okay, the sketch, it's done. And then I would use my extrude tool to turn it into a 3D object. There is one more thing that I want to show you with that sketch, but that's kind of introducing a bit of a slightly new topic. And so I'll show you how to get from here to the 3D. It's a bit of a refresher from, I think, the first week when we made a cube. And then I'll go back to the sketch. So when you click the confirm check mark on that sketch, you remember it takes you back to your main kind of part studio workspace, which has all of these 3D tools. Um, that was like extrude uh, and a bunch of other ones that we have not really talked about yet but we will. So it's extrude that we want, brings open your dialog. It has this highlighted box that prompts you for faces and sketch regions. And that just means like closed areas that you sketched out. Now, um, now comes the part where I decide which of these many sketch regions I want to pick because the way I created my sketch, you can see there's a lot of different sketch regions that I can pick. There's this little like triangular area. There's this like donut shaped area that's cut off. There's this like Venn diagram center looking shape. There's a little circle, big circle, another half donut type of shape. Excuse me? Uh, how, do you, how do you make like the lines that we like just made um, so that it's black? Right, so what I did there is just apply the tangent relation between each of these lines and the circles that they're touching. Um, so how, tangent, how circle, did, line. Wait, do I click the, the pan, do I click the line, then I click the circle? It doesn't matter what order you do them. What you'll find, or I, I believe in on shape, you can use a tangent relation on any two, um, like arcs or curves as well. So it doesn't really matter. Which one is the extrude one? 
Yes, as you may recall, extrude is the very first one, seeing as it's one of the most important ones, most commonly used, maybe the better word. Oh, um, but it's still not black. I need the black. So first I would check that everything except the lines is black. Yeah. Is that the case? Yes. Great. Um, so the other issue might be that the line isn't coincident to your circles. So if, if there's any like confusion there, I, I might just like recreate the line and make sure I click on both circles so that they're coincident. Another way to clear it up is just drag them around and see if they stay on the circles. And if they don't, then there's your issue. But geometrically speaking, once the line is coincident to both circles, yeah, then applying the tangent oh relation. Once I, once I move one, they all move. And also they, and it's all off the circle. It comes off the circle. Interesting. So I, I'm guessing that your issue there is that the line is not coincident to the circles. It doesn't matter how big my lines are because I'm still gonna use the tangent, right? The tangent tool just, okay. So I'll show you in general what the tangent will do if the line is just like out in free space, which maybe is the case for you. If I click the circle and line and apply a tangent, um, this is all a tangent means, right? It means kind of have like a, um, the line rests on the surface of the circle, right? Perhaps your situation is something like this. Uh, no, I'm just trying to use the tangent tool on the, but it's not really like, kind of, it's not really working. If you want to share your screen, let me know. Um, if not, I'll. Can I share I, my screen? I don't screen? have it. Yeah. Go for it. It's like when I'm when I have it, it's just like I can just move it like this. Right. So what it seems like to me is that the tangent relation hasn't been applied. Um, or maybe it has. Um, I tried. Like the ones on the right, definitely the tangent relation is not applied there. But what, what you need to do is apply this relation for every pair of, so here, go ahead and select your tangent tool. Um, ready? Oh my, this is kind of. And good. go ahead and click the line, click the circle, yeah, the big circle. Okay. Um, you can undo there. Yeah, so it's good learning moment for everyone. Whenever you see everything turn red, that means you've over constrained it. You've put too many rules and some of them conflict with each other. When so, I didn't learn, when I didn't do the class before, I just I just explored it and I put a bunch of circles and then I clicked a bunch of buttons and then I clicked the circles and then it said and then the entire thing turned red. Yeah, so that's probably what happened. Like too many rules, Anshu doesn't know what to do. Um, in a case like this, I there are probably some other, like the fact that that over constrained your sketch probably means that there's some things in your lines that you don't know about right now. So I, I would probably suggest deleting lines there and then drawing them again, because geometrically I see that That you see what? Um, right, I, I see that you have your circles fully defined. And there, there, you also have an interesting situation here. Um, it's not really to the issue right now, but what you'll run into in a moment is something interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you after you get through this. Is it the thing that here and here are not the same as here and here? Right, it's related to that. So you're, you're 
two sketches, the ones for your holes and the ones for your outside profile are in two different sketches. You have sketch one, which was from last week, and you have sketch two, which is the one you're working right now, which is kind of like the outside shape. Wait. So yeah, you'll notice, yeah, you can't actually edit the things inside because those are in sketch one. And so the reason it looks like asymmetric is because, yeah, your sketch one is not fully defined either. Ew. Let me do sketch one. Yeah, it's not a. Um, yeah. And to everyone else, like if you have issues, um, I wouldn't worry too much about the gasket. The main, main idea with me doing this gasket example is to really get you familiar with the concepts of sketching, fully defining things, and creating relations and dimensions. Um, we will move on to like more complicated examples. So. If you don't like get the gasket, just make sure you are watching along and um, understand the the concepts here, since we will be like applying the concepts over and over again um, throughout the weeks. So um, with that, um, to to your point, as, like geometrically speaking, if the circles are fully constrained, then if you apply the tangent between every just apply every possible tangent, right? The line, the circle that, it's, that one end is connected to, the line and the circle on the other end is connected to. And mathematically, that should be a fully constrained set of entities. Wait, how do you make it? How do you make it constrained again? So it seems like your circles are already good to go there in your sketch too. So if you have that, just applying the tangent tool. So I guess first making the line so that they're coincident at both ends, two circles, and then making sure that they're tangent as well. That is like a fully constrained set. Wait, did you say like I try to make them both equal? I'm not sure what you mean by them, but inequality. Am I supposed to make it centered? Is that why it's not working? It's, it, in terms of just your sketch two alone, centered. everything is fine. Because my lines are not working. In your sketch two, everything looked fine to me. The circles were all black, which means they're fully constrained. So if you it's create a line. The lines are not fully constrained. Right. So what you need to do is create the tangent relation between the line and the circle um, for both circles that it's coincident to. So if I have like two circles that are fully constrained and I have a line that has endpoints that are on the circles, then the tangent relation. Oh, I found my, I found my, I found my. Sufficient. My, I found my did fully okay, constrain that line. Yeah. I did it. So quickly, here's the extrude tool, which we've talked about, and it asks you for sketch regions. And the regions I'll select, you can probably figure out which one based on the prior knowledge you have of what this shape is supposed to look like. And I just go through and select these various profiles until I have the ones I want. If I accidentally select one that I don't want, like this one, all you have to do is click on it again and it'll deselect it. Or you can try to find it in the list of regions you have selected up to now and just X out. Um, this you can leave on blind. Um, we'll probably go over like the, these later. Um, depth tells you how thick to make it. So you can see it's a bit of a, a tall. Tall gasket right now. Uh, is reality not, is probably. My thing is not centered. A lot thinner. And. Wait, can you show me how to do that again? I was working on my line, so I didn't see. Yeah. Um, and again, like I said um, a bit before, don't worry too much about like getting the gasket. What you what you will probably find in your case, Henry. Um, since you made your holes and your outer body in two different sketches, you you can't 
use a single feature to create like the holes in the gasket. You'll probably end up with like a solid you, lemon. How did you make it like that? Uh, what do you mean, Leo? How did you make that again? If you're talking about the extrusion, um, as we did in week two, I believe. I didn't, I, I was here in week two. So, yeah, um, like when we, you have that, how did you make it to that, like, kind of real? Right, what it asks you for is faces and sketch regions to extrude, which just refers to uh, basically what on shape displays as shaded areas in gray. Wait, wait, I found it, I found it screwed. I wasn't here in week two, so I don't know what it is. And then how did you do that? I didn't, like, yeah. Right, so you, you just press just it? click on them, yes. Mine's just completely solid. Right, and that's what I said, Henry, about how you have the two different sketches, one of which has the holes, one of which has the outer profile. So you won't be able to make the version with the holes in it in a single feature. You can still make it, but it would take a second extrusion in the remove mode, which I will yeah, talk about I later. Can I delete the sketch one? You can do that and recreate the whole sketches, like the sketches for your holes and sketches. How do you two. delete a sketch? Um, same as anything else, you can right click uh, on just... it and hit delete or delete on your keyboard works as well. On it, delete, delete, please delete. Please delete. Right. Please so, delete. Not the All right, so Please as you just saw from what I demonstrated, to create that extrusion, you kind of have to click on a lot of different things. Um, and what that means is that it's not very clear, um, just looking at the sketch, what your final geometry is meant to look like. And so as you work more with CAD um, over the course of your career, I suppose, um, you'll find that it's pretty important in your CAD um, to communicate some kind of design intent, right? If I showed this sketch to somebody, um, they really wouldn't, they could probably guess if they had some um, Wait, I have a question. intuition. Yes. Um, if I, if I, um, does the extrude basically just make it 3D? Right. Um, I, I, yeah, the extrude tool, you can think of it like, if you've heard of the word extrude before in like a manufacturing context or you're, you're basically pushing some material through a shaped mold and that creates like a, a Wait, prism I, of that cross-sectional If I delete shape. sketch one, will it make my extrusion like not be solid? What might happen if you delete your sketch one, um, if you have a dependency in your sketch two on something that was in sketch one, it will probably break your sketch two. Um, Things I can't delete my sketch one. Why are they both red? But can right, I just create? If you try to a, delete sketch one, what I would do is probably um, can I just create, I'm create the creating, three circles in your sketch two, or create the thing you did for sketch two in your sketch one. Um, and ignore the other one. I'm just going to create a new one and do the entire thing over. All right. So um, what I was saying about design intent is that whenever you're creating a sketch or a model or even like a assembly in CAD, it's important that your work is clear to other people in terms of what you want the model and the geometry to look like. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of like coding in that respect, where you want the structure of your code to make sense to other people, because um, Coded in real life, you're probably going to be working with other people on things like CAD models. Um, and so here, this is a bit, you, you saw with how I was extruding this shape, that it's not clear exactly what I'm trying to make, right? Um, it's not clear, for example, if like the gasket is supposed to have three holes or one hole or two holes. Um, and so a way you can do that 
to increase the clarity of your sketching is through the use of something called construction geometry. And so we have a tool here in the middle of your toolbar. It's called construction. You can see the icon is like two lines, one's dashed, and it's going back and forth between them. And so the purpose of this is to allow you to create things in your sketches that won't be interpreted as the edge of a part. You can see that in the sketch, there's some lines and some arcs that are meant to be the edge of the part. For example, this is supposed to be the edge of the part. This is supposed to be the edge of the part. Because in the actual part that I want, you have these closed like contours that make up the actual like, limits of where the actual material is, right? And you can also see that there are some arcs, um, for example, this part of the arc from here to here, that doesn't correspond to anything in real life. Like this arc here doesn't become part of your final geometry. And so that's kind of one of the things that I'm talking about when I talk about um, having a clear sketch. Um, um, I have a question. Yes. How do you make like two circles have the same distance from the center one? To do that, using relations alone, you would need to create a bit of construction geometry, which is what I'll be talking about. But without doing that, you can just create two dimensions and make them the same. Um, oh. If you find it, then you will hopefully be a um, buy into this whole construction geometry idea, which allows you to do things like that with a relation. So let's go ahead and use this construction tool for our first time. And I'm going to apply it to the parts that have lines that aren't part of the final geometry. So this big circle, part of it is inside of the part that's not part of the final geometry. So I'm going to click it. And when I do that, um, with the construction tool applied, you can see it turns it into a dashed line. You can also see that on shape, unshaded this region, which was previously shaded, which means it no longer considers the circle to be a boundary. And so on one hand, that's not good because this part of the circle is a boundary. Um, but we can fix that. And the important thing is that this part of the circle, um, this part that isn't like something in real life, but still exists because of the way we created our sketch, this part is now dashed, which means Onshape will ignore it for the purposes of determining where your boundaries are. Um, other things that should be construction geometry, we have this circle here because this part of the arc um, isn't part of the final geometry. I'll have to turn this into a construction line. And I'll have to turn this circle into a construction line. Can you explain how you did that again? To toggle construction, it's kind of like a property of a sketch entity. You click on the entity that you want to toggle and you hit the construction button. Uh, you can also hit Q on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for it. Yeah, you might have to select first and then use the tool. Yeah, you have to select first. How did you make it like have the like type of outline? Because whenever I click it, and then I click an entity, it just like does nothing. Right. You How probably do you have make to select, black? I did it. Select I did it first. It. Yeah. Okay. Nice. It's like, what does this even do? Right. What I was um, talking about before is the idea is. Not everything in your sketch did, ends up becoming part of your final geometry, right? Um, like these how, internal arcs here aren't actually part of anything physical that's a boundary in your real part. And so by leaving that in as a solid non-construction geometry, um, it, it creates a lot of confusion in your sketch in terms of both selecting sketch regions for other things like extrusions, which ask you to select regions. You said we had to click like five or six different regions just to make all this wanted. No what question. creating this construction geometry does is it tells Onshape to ignore them in terms of creating boundaries. 
have a closed, um, closed region. Like, how do you, like, if you did something by accident with the construction thing, how do you, how do you let it back to normal? So the toggle or the construction tool is one of those things that you can think of it like a toggle switch. You can always go back and forth between construction and not construction using the same tool. So you can select it again, click construction again, and now it's solid. You can also hit Q on your keyboard, which as I mentioned is your shortcut for that construction um, tool. Uh, so I have a question. How do you make like the distance with the two circles on your on those two small circles on the side um to the same um as the big circle in the center? Like the area from the like the area from the wait, how do you do that? Do you just have to click the two centers? If you're talking about the dimension tool, yes, you click the two centers. It says it can't an entity cannot be dimensioned to itself. So what you did there is probably select the oh, same I point got twice. It, I, got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. All right, and now to get us back to where we were before, um, we're going to close these parts of the outer profile that we turned into dashed lines using the arc tool. So this is the last of the probably very important ones that we haven't covered yet. Um, but you can imagine its function is to create circular arcs. And this is just parts of a circle, right? Not the full 360 degrees all around circle, but just a little bit of it, like a curved line that has the same curvature as a circle, right? Constant curvature. So by default, it puts you on three point arc, but there are also some other options. So you might not see them like side by side. It might be in a drop down menu like this for me. If you click on this little drop down chevron here, um, it will give you a few options. And so these are all very useful and these are all pretty standard in most CAD programs. Um, you'll, see, you'll see like three point arc, tangent arc, center point arc. In our case, we'll do center point arc. You can use any of the three in any case, but just the way that you're creating them, sometimes one is easier than the other. And in this case, I think center point arc is a bit easier. You can see in the description, you sketch an arc by defining its center, start, and endpoints. So we'll go ahead. This time, this is our first tool that takes three inputs instead of one or two. We click the center of the circle, or the arc rather, the starting point, and the end point. Again, the center. Whoops. Uh, make sure when you do this that like you're you're hitting these automatic relation um, center, first point, second point, again, center, first point, second point, and center, first point, second point. And once I do all those things, you can see Onshape goes back to highlighting these regions that were unhighlighted. Now I've created a new boundary using that R tool. And another interesting thing now, you can see that I can now select this entire gasket region that I wanted in a single click instead of having to click like six different regions one at a time. I can just select the whole thing in one go, which is really convenient both in terms of communication. It's, it's instantly clear now that this is the geometry that I want, right? Before it wasn't clear because I had all these different shapes that were independently selectable, but now I can't even, even if I wanted to, I can't select this little triangle shape, for example. I can only select the whole thing. Um, and that's kind of what I was talking about in terms of um, having a clear design intent in how you structure your sketches, right? Like technically none of this stuff with construction geometry was necessary, but it's still very good to do, both because it makes your life easier when you're selecting regions and because it makes it more clear to other people what you're trying to make. And I'll go back. If you left your extrude in there, um, you might notice this little warning symbol and that'll usually happen whenever um, you, you, you do things like that where you, you mess with the regions in the sketch. Um, 
if you don't want to deal with it, I would just delete it. Um, but you can go back and individually fix the issue it was having. So here, I'll go back and recreate that extrude. And this is mostly to illustrate the difference, right? Before, you saw I had to click every single one of these regions to tell it what to extrude. But now, with one click, I get the same result as I did before. And this is much better. Right, there's only one region. So it's less likely to break when I change things. And question. Yes. How do you delete an extrude? Extrude. Um, yeah, anything, any thing you can generally delete just by selecting it and hitting delete on your keyboard or by right clicking it and hitting delete, which is usually the. Even when I right last click, it doesn't option. do anything. When I right click, it doesn't do anything. Right. Are you right clicking it here in your feature tree? Yeah. Well, if that doesn't work, you can just left click it and hit delete on your keyboard. Still doesn't work. I would also make sure that you're Sorry. not in your sketch workspace and also not editing the extrude. Like make sure you're not like editing anything. You're just in like the workspace. For some, I can't delete my extrude. Oh, no, I can delete it now. Okay, delete it. Also, I need to make my sketch so that because for some reason my sketch, when I do an extrude, it, it makes it so that only half of the circles on the left is like showing. I'm not explaining it. Like when I put, when I do an extrude, it doesn't actually, it doesn't show what you are showing right now. Right, so yeah, something like that is probably, um, I guess you can sh share what you have. Okay. I have this. All right. Right, so yeah, this is what I was um, kind of going getting at before, where um, I, I guess there's two things here. Um, you still have multiple sketch regions, right? Like you have little triangles in the, in the corners um, that are their own like closed regions. And the other thing you did is that you turn the holes into construction lines. And so the idea with the construction lines is that we want to turn into construction lines everything that is not going to be part of the final boundaries of our parts. Uh, what you've done there is you've kind of turned what should be the boundary of our part, which is these holes, and you've turned them into construction lines, which means Onshape will ignore them. So I shouldn't have done that. Right. How do you undo that? Um, same tool, yeah. You, I think you got it, yeah. So I, I'd say at this point, um, as we near the end of class, there's some other things that I'm, I, I want to get through. Here. So the recording of the class probably be enough to get you through the gasket example. And if you let me share my screen again, I'll go through and show you just a few more things. Um, um, at this like, point, you when, have... When like, I do it, I can't make it like 3D. Right, at this point, I would say, go through the recording of this class and, um, or go through like videos or other resources. Um, and there's more than enough information where you can go through this whole process. Um, before we wrap up, since we are approaching 7.30, um, I'll say that at this point you have seen basically all of the important sketch features that you would need to create a shape in 2D in a sketch. And we're going to kind of move our focus towards in the coming classes is towards making 3D objects. So the one tool that we have used so far 
from going between a sketch and a 3D object is our extrude tool. Um, the one that we're uh, kind of wanted to go over today, but maybe now we'll go over next week is our revolve tool. And these two together make up almost all of the um, basic kind of tools that we would need to make at least objects on this level. We have fairly straightforward geometry. The parts themselves are pretty simple. Um, to make these, you really don't need anything more than extrude, revolve, and one other tool, um, which is called the fillet tool. So I will show you, I will show you the fillet tool really quickly. The fillet and chamfer are kind of like a pair. Um, quickly show you what they do and how they allow you to create things that you can't do just in a sketch and extruding it. And then I'll leave you with one question that I want you to think about before we come back and reconvene next week for the next class. So the idea with a fillet and a chamfer is it really helps you to approach a more realistic shape without having to do a lot of the more complicated geometry or math that it would require to uh, model these shapes otherwise. So a fillet you can think of as just rounding off a corner. Wherever you have a corner, a fillet will round it off. Chamfer is a similar idea, but instead of rounding it off, it kind of like files that edge into uh, another straight face. Um, you can think of it kind of like um, kind of taking a slice off of a corner um, to make it not a corner anymore. Um, don't worry too much about chamfer for now. I'll just show you how fillet works. Um, and this is kind of like the first step we're taking into working in a 3D space instead of working in a 2D space, right? This is something that is not really connected to um, something that you manually explicitly have to think about and calculate and dimension and constrain yourself. It's more of like a higher level tool that Onshape has built in that allows you to achieve things that are pretty easy to do but are more um, mathematically difficult to express. And so a lot of words there. Um, the main thing I'll leave you with is seeing the results of this and we can talk more about it next week. Um, but you can see if, for example, a desired geometry looks something like this, uh, which is going to be very common as you start designing like more complex parts. If I told you to make something like this in 3D, um, you'd really have no good way to um, go about this, right? Like I can't even imagine how many different like sketches and um, revolves and extrusions you would need to create this kind of geometry. But the fillet tool really easily allows you to um, do something like that. And it's kind of like, in a sense, um, kind of the idea of direct modeling, right? Where you are thinking now, not in terms of drawing shapes and mathematically constraining them, but kind of like you're working with a real physical piece of clay. Um, you're kind of working with your part, you're pulling on edges, you're pushing and pulling and rounding things off. It's a lot more of that kind of direct modeling sense. So um, that's something that you can play around with. Um, I introduced them here not so that you like get it immediately, but that you have like kind of a reference for um, the fact that they exist and how to use them if you want to come back and watch the recording. And um, I have a question. with that, yes. Um, for some reason, I think I already asked you when I do extreme, when I do an extreme, there's like this space that's not filled in that's supposed to be filled in. Right, you can click on regions for the extrude dialog. And that was I don't know. also the, the point. That was the thrust of the construction geometry idea. You can Do see, for example, I can space? fill in these circles. Oh, wait, you can? How do you, how do, you do that? Wait, how did you fill that in? Wait, I can fill it in. Yay. Right. You can, yeah. So in this box, you can put in as many 
inputs as or arguments as you want. Um, right. So seeing as it is 730, I will leave you with the awareness that these fillet and chamfer tools exist, which kind of introduce the sense of like real 3D modeling, right? Direct 3D modeling. That's not just drawing 2D shapes. Um, and one thing that I want you to think about before next week, maybe try it for yourself. At this point, you technically have, um, including the fillet and chamfer tools, you technically have all the tools that you need to create a sphere, um, a perfect ball in Onshape. So consider how you'd go about doing that. Maybe try doing it for yourself and come back next week with some ideas on how we'll do that. And next week, my plan is to introduce the second of the 3D tools, the Revolve. This is the other big powerhouse of the 3D tools. And from there, hopefully we'll get to start on our first project, which will be this sprocket crank machine. So that's all I have for the class. If you are good to go, feel free to leave. I'll see you next week, same time. And I guess I'll stick around for a few more seconds if you have any specific questions or issues. Um, and that is all. So thank see you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.